guys, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. I share one of these every single week, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on future dinner inspiration. I actually picked five comments, four recipes of five comments to be featured in this What's for Dinner. I am absolutely loving all the meal ideas in the comments that I've been getting. I wish I could make them all. If your meal idea isn't picked in this one, don't worry. I will be going through and doing this every single week. Just just keep leaving them and hopefully yours will be picked in one of the next videos coming up. I just think this is awesome and everyone is getting tons of ideas in the comments so just keep leaving meal ideas down below and then you can scroll through and when you're making your meal plan and get ideas in the comments and not just what I'm making in my video. So this week I'll be featuring the comment right before the meal idea so stay tuned through the video so you can see if your comment was featured. This week's video is actually in collaboration with Stephanie o over at home sweet Stephanie so I think between the two of us we will have you covered for dinner inspiration this week she actually shares these awesome like grocery haul and meal prep videos which I absolutely love so she'll share with you like what she bought at the grocery store and then how she preps it for the week I just love that so definitely go show her some love subscribe to her channel and watch her what's for dinner video this week and yeah let's get into meal number one Alright guys, so for meal number one, I'm just making a super simple spaghetti with meat sauce and I'm just browning some ground beef along with some red onion and some bell pepper. I'm adding my favorite spaghetti sauce. It is the Victoria brand tomato and basil along with about half of a jar of water, just giving it a good stir. And I let this simmer for about 40 minutes on low just so those peppers got tender and my meat got really, really tender as well. So I just served ours over some thin spaghetti with some Parmesan cheese on top and a big salad on the side and some of the newer company, I think they're called, breadsticks on the side. I just love a simple spaghetti dinner and this was totally inspired by Carol over at The Simple Mama. I'll have her linked above. Go show her some love. I love her What's For Dinner videos as well and this is just like my grandma used to make except she used to put mushrooms in hers but my family will not have that in my house. So. This is our dinner at this night. All right, so my first winner from last week's video is Andrea, and she said, what about a taco salad or a Cobb salad? So I decided to do a BLT salad, so it's kind of a spinoff of a Cobb salad, and the dressing is what makes this salad so special. So I'm going to have the whole recipe linked down below as usual, but it's basically a mixture between mayo, sour cream, and some spices, and this would totally make an awesome dip, but um, we're going to thin it out with some milk, and you just thin it out to your desired consistency, and I'll show you a clip at the end of how thin or thick, however you decipher it, um, that I made my dressing. Um, when I was younger, when I would ever eat at my grandmom's house, and we had salad, she would literally just plop like a tablespoon of mayo on top of my lettuce. Yep. That was our salad dressing. My grandma was born in 1918, and that's how she made salad dressing. So this is kind of a take on that. It has a fresh green onion in it, and it's just super fresh and delicious. And the longer this sits in your fridge, the better. It's so good. And in my actual salad, I have butter romaine on the bottom. I have some bacon chopped up. I have some cheddar cheese. I have some carrots, some bell pepper chopped up. I have some cucumber. Some tomatoes, of course, because this is a BLT salad. And then I did have some chicken strips in my freezer that I just cooked up and chopped up as well. But that is totally unnecessary. Um, and that is it for my BLT salad. I like to drizzle the dressing right on top so everything gets coated. And I just give it a really good stir. Thank you. 
All right, and this is my plate. I did put some croutons on top. I didn't want to put them in the salad so they would get soggy. And I just love a full meal salads like this that have all the protein and they just really fill you up and they're just a whole meal. I could have a different salad like this every single night and I would be happy. All right, the next meal winner was from Rose and she suggested kebabs and I just love how she suggested using the leftover chicken and veggies um, for rice for the leftovers. So I am just marinating some chicken in this great value herb and garlic marinade. We really like this. This is the first time I ever tried using it. And I'm just throwing the chicken as well as all the veggies that I cut up. I have zucchini, I have squash, and I have yellow, red, and green bell pepper. And I'm just adding all of that to the marinade to marinate the veggies and the chicken together. As you saw, I just did everything out on the grill and anything that didn't fit on a skewer, I just cooked on the side and put in the fridge for some meal prep and we have baked potatoes on the side with some sour cream, cheese, and some bacon bits and this is really, really good. Love the marinade and the kids love this. They loved eating it on the stick. They thought it was fun. Even if they wouldn't eat chicken and veggies, like normally they loved eating it off of a stick. It made it super fun for them. All right, so Jessica and April both suggested Swedish meatballs and I never made like authentic Swedish meatballs before. I've made versions of Swedish meatballs, like my own versions, but I really wanted to attempt to make authentic Swedish meatballs and I went back and forth between like a bunch of different recipes and I think I did a pretty good job making Making an authentic recipe with the with the nutmeg and the allspice and the mustard. Um, the only thing I didn't do, I didn't use pork and I didn't use um, the grape jelly. But I will link the recipes that I use down below for um, inspiration. But um, I just made the meatballs and then I'm simmering them in a pan. All right, so once the meatballs are cooked, you're going to remove them from the pan. You're going to leave any of the brown bits or any of the onions that fell out. Just leave them all in there because that's going to give you tons of flavor for your gravy. And now you're not going to add any other fat source. You're not going to add butter or anything like that to make your gravy. You're just going to keep all that grease and fat that the meat gave you. And I'm just sprinkling in some flour. And this is where I was lazy and I should have measured my flour because I messed up my gravy. But I'm just sprinkling my flour in there, giving it a stir to absorb all the grease from the meat. And then I'm going to add my beef broth and I didn't have enough beef broth because I added too much flour so I had to improvise with some water and a beef bouillon but that worked out fine so I stirred that in as well as my heavy cream and I'm also stirring in some of the mustard and Worcestershire sauce to tie in the flavors of the meatballs Once I let that simmer for a little bit and let all the flavors come together, I added the meatballs back to the sauce, gave it a good stir, topped it with some parsley, and then we were good to go. On the side, I made green beans as usual. I have like a million different ways to make green beans, and I just laid them in my air fryer. These are still frozen with a few pads of butter and some Parmesan cheese, garlic powder, and onion powder, and this is how they turned out. If you like the green bean fries from Fridays, this is kind of has the same flavor, but they're way better for you. So I served my Swedish meatballs over egg noodles, and I like to take like a dollop of sour cream and put it over my egg noodles as if the gravy and the meatballs were a million calories as it is, but I just like the tank of the sour cream you could also add sour cream into your gravy instead of heavy cream but I just wanted to try it with heavy cream this time I was going back and forth between a bunch of different recipes and then I just poured the gravy and meatballs over top and this is my plate this is really really good I wanted to try a more authentic recipe but I didn't want to use the grape jelly I didn't have grape jelly anyway um, so this was my version and I hope you guys enjoyed all right, and the last comment winner for this week is from Jamie Lynn. She suggested grilled chicken sandwiches with homemade fries. So I am making copycat Chick-fil-A spicy chicken sandwiches, and they are my favorite. And if you didn't know, the secret to a Chick-fil-A sandwiches is, or Chick-fil-A chicken, is that they soak their chicken in pickle juice. Now your chicken will not taste like pickle juice, so if you don't like pickles, it's okay. The pickle juice is just super salty and it brines your chicken. If you don't have pickle juice, you can totally use salt water. There's plenty of um, 
different recipes on Pinterest that teach you how to do that as well. So here I just have my flour mixture which is going to coat the chicken and it's just a combination of flour, paprika, black pepper, cayenne pepper because I'm making the spicy one and some baking powder and then I have my egg wash on the side and that's just eggs and water. Now the tried and true secret to getting your breading like Chick-fil-A's is to add some of that egg wash to the flour mixture and you want it to be like wet sand. You're gonna mix it together and you're gonna have like flaky little ball type things in your flour. It's gonna look something like this. So you're just gonna take your brined chicken and dip it into your egg mixture and just kind of let it hang and let all that egg mixture drip off and then place it into your flour mixture and push it down. You can see me pushing it into the flour mixture with my fork because you want as much flour to adhere to your chicken as possible and you really cake it on there because you know Chick-fil-A has awesome breading and it is a lot of breading that's really caked on there. So from what I hear, Chick-fil-A uses peanut oil to fry their chicken. I didn't have that. I wasn't planning on buying peanut oil. So I'm just frying mine in some vegetable oil. And my first intention was to cook these in the air fryer. But as you can see, womp womp, it was a total fail. So I don't recommend it. I learned how to properly season my air fryer and everything. I coated each chicken with butter and the breading still flew off of it and it didn't work out. So I recommend frying them in oil and they definitely taste better that way anyway. And while the chicken was cooking, I also buttered up all my hamburger rolls and toasted those up because Chick-fil-A uses like a ton of butter all over their rolls. And I'm also making some cucumber salad on the side. I will write out the recipe down below, but it's one part mayonnaise, two parts sour cream, and I just run some red wine vinegar on top to kind of water it down. And then I add some seasonings and some celery seed. You can add some sugar to it. I didn't today because I wasn't feeling it. I really don't like a sweet cucumber salad, but the longer this sits, the better it is. And also on the side, I'm making some homemade fries that worked out beautifully in the air fryer unlike the chicken and I'm just soaking these in some cold water for about 30 minutes soaking these will remove most of the starch and make them be crispier so I soak them and then I'm just patting them dry and then spilling them all over my counter as usual and then for the seasoning I'm just using some olive oil some garlic powder, some onion powder, some pepper, and I'm trying the Trader Joe's seasoning salt and fries. I never tried this before, but it's really, really good. You can see the ingredients there. If you're interested, if you can't find the Trader Joe's seasoning salt, and I'm just adding a ton of this on there. And finally, I'm just adding some parsley and giving this a really good stir to coat everything and then adding it to my air fryer at 400 degrees. I think this took about a half hour. All right, and this is what it looked like all plated up. Of course, I added a slice of pepper jack cheese, just like Chick-fil-A always does, and some romaine lettuce and pickles, of course, and drizzled some ranch on there, and then I have my fries on the side. So if you're craving Chick-fil-A, this will do it for you. I love their spicy chicken sandwiches. I've never even had an original chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A because I always order their spicy one. They're the best. So if you're loving the subscribers pick my meals as much as I do, please keep leaving them in my comments because I'm having so much fun letting you guys pick what meals are featured in my what's for dinner videos. I'm just picking like as many as I possibly can. Honestly, I'm picking like five and six at a time. Next week, I think I have five different meal is going to be featured so just keep leaving them down below you can leave full recipes one word i don't care just comment down below and definitely go check out stephanie's channel and watch her what's for dinner video and let her know i sent you and thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye